So the Northampton Minecraft project is uh, is a collaborative effort between Northampton Community Television and uh, Northampton High School Technology Department. The way that this project got started, um, my co-teacher was was absent one day, and he has a room right next to me. And as I was walking down the hallway to go to uh, the office, I peeked my head in, and I saw a TV with uh, how it's made, a VHS that the um, the, my co-teacher just recently had a child, and he, he didn't have a lesson plan and, uh, for that day. Uh, so on an old VHS uh, TV, there was how it's made on, in the corner. The lights are off, but then I see, coming from the projector in the middle of the room, a VGA cord coming all the way down into a laptop, and a student playing Minecraft with all the other students watching. And I said, wow, what is going on here? Everybody, instead of being, uh, you know, there's clearly no uh, you know, in interest in this movie. Everybody is watching this one student and, and on, on this Minecraft world. And I said, what's going on here? So this was the, uh, and this started a year and a half long relationship with uh, one of a terrific student that I have, Zev Seltzer. He's the project lead on this uh, project. He's unable to be here today because of relig religious uh, observances, but I said, you're coming anyways. We made a short little video, and he's <laughs> going to do a little technical aspect of showing this. But what that really shows is we really start to, we really have to change the way, we really need to flip the script of what is intrinsically interesting to students and how they learn. Uh, so just really briefly, two minute overview of the project. The Northampton Minecraft Project is actually a collaborative not only with NCTV, but also with the Northampton Planning Office. Uh, it takes North, uh, the Minecraft world and it incorporates, and you can go to the next slide, it incorporates li LiDAR data. And LiDAR data is there's a plane overhead and it, it sends signals and bounces them back to give you topographical data of, uh, in, in this case, the city of Northampton. Um, Zev was so giddy about this, uh, about this new, we, we had some coarse uh, topographical maps, but Zev was so giddy that we got this LiDAR data. He was there waiting with a, with a hard drive. The day that it came out, before the, the, the actual people who paid tens of thousands of dollars of this data to, to get actually had it. So he was the first one that actually parsed through this data. Um, and that just shows the motivation uh, and the intrinsic value of when you're interested in something, when you're motivated, you can, you really, it, it, it plays into that educational uh, the components of, of, of learning. And so uh, the next slide is, is where that data comes in in the first rendition of uh, our city. So this is the first rendition. Again, you can see that it's, it's really coarse. There's a lot of work that needs to be done, uh, and it's all the same types of blocks. But after, uh, after kind of management of some students and, and painting the world, you can go to the next slide, we have our actual city. And this, is, uh, this has been a, a tremendous effort, not only on Zev's part, but also the management of other students, which I'll get into in a second. And so, like I said, uh, we, when, I, when we learned that Zev couldn't be here today, I said, you're coming anyways, we're gonna make this nice video, and so we have a, uh, a video. The Northampton Minecraft Project is a collaborative effort from, between the Northampton High School Technology Department and the Northampton Community Television and Northampton City Planning Office to recreate the city of Northampton in the game of Minecraft using LiDAR data, which let us take a 3D model of the entire city and just convert that directly into the game of Minecraft. When the map is finished, I really hope to be able to use it for educational lessons based in the 3D city. And also, I hope to be able to use it for virtual exploration of the city so you, people can walk around, um, maybe learn about different buildings as they see them, and possibly even actually feel like they're walking in the city by using Oculus Rift headset, um, head mounted displays. And so 
the things that I really want to um, to hit on here, uh, it's a little hard to see here, but the main thing that I've learned in uh, over the course of uh, this project and also other capstone projects and independent projects with my students, we really need to be looking at the teacher in, in really different ways. I always say that teachers are now CEOs. And that usually has a negative connotation because we think about monetary efficiency. But if you ever look at my pay stub, I'm the poorest CEO you're going to ever see. But I, we're also, teachers are the most important CEOs as well because I, we are the managers of the educational efficiency and the learning of all of our students. And you cannot put a price on that. And so what you really have to do, there's, there's something really flawed with a system that will penalize a student for being 30 minutes late after a bell, but disregard three hours of learning after school on an independent project. And so the things that we look for, the, the things that really make our society great are these, this idea of, of innovation and, uh, and the, the risk taking that, that uh, goes along with the experiential knowledge that uh, one can have in the learning process. Uh, and so when a student comes, comes to me with a project like this or when a student comes uh, and uh, I will talk about this, it's looking at this as almost a startup. Some of the people that we look up to most in our society, the Gateses of, the society, of our society, the Steve Jobses of our society, they, they were focusing on, they were, they were learning in a non-traditional setting. And so what happens is, why, why, do we, why do we perpetuate these standardized testings? And why do we perpetuate this common core when the, the people that we really are, are looking to or the, the things that really influence our society are not the same structures? Uh, and so, uh, that also, just like echoing what everybody said here, uh, it's not only the focus on technical skills, but the soft skills. And one of the other biggest things that I've learned is it's okay for your students to know that you're not, that you do not have all the answers to things. And that plays into this, that CEO part again in the sense that you, I, starting this project, I knew nothing about Minecraft. I knew nothing about GIS data. But I knew about project management. I knew about how to guide students and, get, and connect them with the resources like NCTV and the Northampton Planning Office. And, I, and, and set deadlines and expectations and guide them through that process. So it's really, it puts a teacher in a vulnerable, vulnerable position to say, I don't know this piece of software. Uh, there's certain things that I, you know, I have an expertise in, but it's impossible to learn all of these tools. But it's not impossible to guide students in the direction that will that they're interested in. Uh, and then ultimately, what happens is after they gain those technical uh, that technical aspects, they move on to that level that you're in. So that management of others, and that's where kind of the project is is at a crossroads right now, where Zev is actually assembling a team to manage them and watch them grow. He has all that technical expertise. Now it's time to graduate into that management and and learn some of those and learn some of those skills. Uh, these two pictures just. Um, to show you, a uh, couple days a uh, couple days ago, there was a school local Northampton rally in which this, the the superintendent, the mayor, and the president of MTA spoke. They set up their computers and they uh, showed elementary and middle schoolers the project, and side by side they guided they guided these students. It was amazing. Here. Again, it's not about just the technical, it's about those soft skills. This is Zev, who probably never imagined himself being put into this position, but speaking in front of 500 uh, fellow students at Northampton High School uh, on the Minecraft project. So again, it's developing not only that technical skill in that certain specific software, but also looking at the larger picture. Uh, and with that, I'm gonna hand it off to uh, Al Williams. Um, so. My name's Al Williams, I'm the director of Northampton Community Television, which is the equivalent of BIG in Northampton, Massachusetts, which is in Western Massachusetts. Um, our partnership in this project, um, as Kathy's mentioned about BIG, we don't really think about ourselves as a television station, even though TV is still in our name for the time being. Um, we really think of ourselves as an organization that empowers um, expression of any sort, and we don't make any assumptions about what that means, which can seem very, very broad, 
um, but we, it's a starting point for us. And, and our, our partnership in this project was that we are an incubator, and as Jeremy might be the CEO, we are the venture capitalists <laughs> of the project. Okay, so um, what, what that allows us to do is seek out community partners and invest in them, um, in, invest in them financially. Um, and these are usually small financial investments. I think in the Minecraft project, it cost us about $500 plus $20 a month is our investment into it. Um, but it allows us to create circumstances and find community projects in which um, we can take risks and which people who have interest in, in taking risks are empowered to do so. And in large structures like school districts and municipalities, it can be very challenging to take risks. And so we can be a good partner in, in creating spaces for that risk taking to occur and providing resources for that to occur. Um, I think that one of the appeals, my sort of connection and, and I, this concept came to me because we had been at a community media conference and discovered that there was a group in Lake Compounds um, just outside of Burlington that was recreating Lake Compounds on a one-to-one -one scale. Lake Compounds, Lake Champlain, not Lake Compounds, <laughs> I'm sorry, Lake Champlain. And, um, and doing it through a, an educational program through a, um, a marine biological organization. Okay, this wasn't a traditional school district. Um, so when we started conceiving that project, we sort of had already had this idea that we wanted to do something with Minecraft. And the reason we thought Minecraft was a great um, tool was because there's a lot of interest in it. And um, we are always trying to get rid of our own assumptions about the ways that people want to express themselves and communicate. And that can be a very challenging thing to do. Um, it's something we try to practice on a daily basis. Um, one thing Tessa said about power, when she talked about power in her, her discussion that what aspect of media there's always a result of, um, there's an aspect of power making when you are, when you are creating media. And um, one way that, that we like to think about that is one of those kinds of power can be self-power. And when you're engaged in storytelling, what you're teaching people to do when they are beginning to learn storytelling is you're, tr creating, you're teaching them to create identity. And that creation of identity is its self-power. And I'm almost hesitant to say call that empowerment, because empowerment often culturally means towards something or against something. I just mean identity. And um, so uh, <laughs> and I can tend to sort of wander a little bit in my thinking here. But what I'm, what I'm really trying to get at is that's one way we don't make assumptions about the kinds of ways in which we teach people to communicate. People are interested in communicating using a certain tool. We want to invest in that communication, because we don't know what kind of identities people are going to create in the future. And by not assuming that we know those things, um, it allows us to be surprised and it allows us to advance uh, in ways that are unexpected and get around our own hang-ups that are our own assumptions. So um, that's sort of where we are in the investment strategy. There's also a larger community aspect of this for us in that we like, you know, for, for our students, we're currently, this is a long-term project, building the entire city. What Jeremy showed you today, that's, that's, that it's very, it's a really, well-rendered part of the city, but it is a very small part of the city that we're finished with, OK? <laughs> Most of it is still that gray area. Um, however, it gives us an opportunity to get the community invested in. And also, we'd like to open this up in the future to be a community project, which bridges between the school system and the community, OK? Where we could have, um, I guess it would be community service learning almost, right? Where you have um, people in a senior center who are maybe building the senior center in Minecraft. I mean, I don't know what that will look like. But um, the idea is to inspire people into community conversation um, about things like planning. Um, this, kind of, this kind of project, you can, you can utilize it practically in moving buildings around a city, potentially, or teaching about the history of the city, or just inspiring people to um, feel some pride or involvement with their city, which are all good results for us. So. And building on that, too, one of the things that I'm, I'm a big proponent of uh, and that NCTV has been wonderful and tremendous with is designing curriculum that is not trapped in the vacuum of the school. So we'll do, this is one of many projects that we collaborate on. One, another one, for instance, the seven-day film sprint in which students have seven days to make a film, and then we have a community showing of these. And so when you, when there is that community response and feedback, that will add to the motivation of students. It's not just, it not just goes onto a computer and then I tuck it away on a little DVD that goes into my desk. It's stuff that's out and about. It, we, put on, we put them on YouTube, 
We put them into festivals and contests, and, the, and we have discussions uh, about this. And it not only builds uh, the educational components of the students, but also it builds in the in the larger aspects of how we how we uh, open that dialogue for our own communities. And I think that's a, a great. Um parallel to what we're doing here at Brookline Interactive Group because we have Christy Frazier um, who is also teaching at the high school. So she has dual roles really and um, that's not unlike your situation yeah. where Jeremy actually was once an employee of NCTV and now is a teacher and is going after his master's in education and it's really exciting to see sort of him take that experience in community media and sort of bring it to education and be able to apply some of these things that I think because we are outside of the school district in community media we have some flexibility and freedom to do things he's sort of bringing that into the education realm as well and so I, I'm excited to see sort of what he does with it what Josh continues to do with it it's really exciting to hear what what you're both doing and um, tying in with the community media aspect um, you know how we can be an incubator of projects like this how we can bring these projects to schools how we can help support you in ways that you may not be able to do something specifically in your school but we can provide some of the support or equipment or expertise uh, I think there's a lot of opportunities for collaboration